Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about Borna-Lewis equation. So this equation uh, tells us about the energy conservation and when the uh, basically liquid is in flow, that means it's in motion. So let us derive this equation. So here we'll derive this equation by conservation of energy principle basically. So let us take a uh, pipe or tube. which is let's say we'll keep uh, the at a different height let's say it's from the ground this side of the tube is at a height h1 and this side of the tube is at a height h2 the height difference is there between the two sides of the tube now area of cross section also is different let's say the area of projection here is a1 here the area of projection is a2 and the velocity of liquid coming in let's say here it is v1 the velocity of liquid coming out let's say the here it is v2 because there will be uh, of course the velocity difference now what we will calculate we will calculate first the work done work done on the liquid and remember in this discussion we are considering liquid to be incompressible so for incompressible liquid the mass of liquid coming in in a particular time let's say delta t will be equal to the amount or mass of the liquid coming out let's say this amount of liquid will reach here in the time in the time delta t so let me and in delta t time this liquid will be here so let me uh, point this one this is let's say point a this is point b and this is point c and d so first I will calculate the work done. So we know that work done is force into displacement but here in terms of pressure force is equal to uh, your pressure is equal to force per unit area. So force is equal to pressure into area and the displacement is here let us say this is the displacement. So displacement we also know that displacement is equal to velocity into time. So if we will consider the position 1 this is let us say position 2 so in position 1 the liquid coming in the position 1 the liquid coming in that is it will cover in delta t time the distance v delta t v1 delta t and pressure uh, force it will be force will be pressure that is p1 a1 so what will be the work done on the liquid here here the work is done on the liquid we are pushing the liquid and here work done by the liquid liquid is coming means uh, one side it is on the liquid it is by the liquid so here work is done on the liquid we are pushing it so work done work done on the liquid on the liquid at position 1 work done on the liquid at position 1 w1 is equal to let's say i can write force into displacement p1 a1 v delta t i can write this one similarly here work done by the fluid w2 i can write p2 a2 b2 delta t because force into displacement w is equal to force into displacement we can use right so these are the w1 and w2 but but w1 is on and w2 is by so if you want to write it 
on the fluid right by the fluid suppose this is a box this is a pin i am pushing it on the the force is on the object now another object is here this object is pushing it by that so here the work is done by the object if i want to write what is the work on, done on the object i'll write a negative sign for that so net work done on the fluid net work done on the fluid w let's say net work done on the fluid on the fluid w will be equal to w1 minus w2 which one which i can write p1 a1 del b1 delta t minus p2 a2 b2 delta t right now we know the equation of continuity what is that equation of continuity tells us that that a1 b1 equal to a2 b2 that means you might have realized this one if a pipe is here and one side if you will squeeze suppose you are uh, watering your garden and you have connected the one side of your pipe to the tap so water is coming in and if you will squeeze the uh, face of the your pipe you will see that water is coming out with more speed the velocity speed is more that means when area is reducing the speed of water coming out will be more this is the equation that a1 b1 must be a constant quantity right and this is also this holds good for only in incompressible liquid and steady flow also this one also same so turbulent for turbulent flow it will not work because velocity and other thing will change continuously with time so it will not work so which one it will work for incompressible and steady flow so a1 b1 equal to a2 b2 here also the mass of liquid coming in must be equal to mass of liquid coming out in time delta t similar uh, logic you can use that mass is equal to uh, your mass is equal to like in terms of density density is equal to mass per volume and your mass is equal to density into volume so it is position 1 position 2 right and uh, you can write that uh, rho is same because same liquid is density of same liquid is flowing through so volume 1 and volume 2 it will be different it is coming out let's say so it will you can write that uh, your mass of liquid coming in is equal to mass of liquid coming out so rho 1 v1 equal to rho 2 uh, v2 but rho 1 is equal to rho 2 so you can write that this is not velocity this is volume volume so volume is equal to you can write volume is your area into distance distance in delta t time distance will be this one v1 delta t so a1 b1 delta t rho 1 equal to rho 2 a2 this one is velocity how can i write this one i can write small v right this is volume and this is your velocity so a2 b2 delta t delta t delta t cancelled out rho 1 rho 2 cancelled out because density is same same liquid is flowing through the tube okay so density will be same so we can write a1 b1 equal to a2 b2 this is what your equation of continuity equation of continuity which holds continuity equation of continuity so which holds good for incompressible and steady flow so this one will use here a1 b1 is equal to a2 b2 because it will also hold uh, good here so a1 b1 will be a2 b2 and uh, delta t is the time so we can write that w1 minus w2 w1 minus w2 equal to and this is your volume right this is your volume so you can write 
that this is P1 minus P2. So both are same A1 V1 delta T and A2 V2 delta T is same that is your delta V let us say change in volume I will write this is uh, area into distance this is volume right area V1 delta T is the distance area into distance in a cylindrical object is a volume. So here it is a volume so I will write delta V so this is your net work done W net net work done on the fluid. This is net work done on the fluid. Now, from work energy theorem, we know that this work done must be equal to the change in energy. So, here both kinetic and your potential energy will change. Why? Because there is a height difference. Gravity means potential energy. This position will be diff different from this position. Of course, it is flowing and velocity is different. Here it is V1 due to the area of cross section, difference of area of cross section. Here the velocity is also different, right? That is why the kinetic energy will also be different. So, we will calculate the change in potential energy and change in kinetic energy. So, let us calculate that and we will equate with the work done. Clear what we are targeting to do? So, we will calculate the we will calculate the change in potential and change in kinetic energy in this process in this uh, system. So, change in kinetic energy that is delta K I am writing it will be half mv square and here your mass you know mass is this one mass is rho 1 v 1 or you can say mass you can write in this term also right that is rho a v1 delta t so delta k you can write that half or this is your delta v so you can write half rho delta v rho delta v this is volume rho into volume is mass half mv square is a kinetic energy this one is the mass and velocity here the velocity is different here the velocity is different so change in kinetic energy that means we are finding out k2 minus k1 so k2 is v2 square minus v1 square half mv square minus half m v2 square minus half m v1 square i am writing it directly so rho delta v this is basically the which term this is basically the mass term mass is and delta v is the volume this is the volume right this is the volume so delta k is this one now delta u that is the potential energy so this is the kinetic energy change in kinetic energy change in potential term change in potential so change in potential is mgh right potential is m m is again the rho, rho into delta v so this is the mass m g g is the acceleration due to gravity and height difference here the height the v2 position 2 the height is at h2 position 1 the height is at h1 so height difference is i'll write h1 h2 minus h1 so this much of energy change because total energy we have to calculate at each position sum of kinetic and potential energy is the total energy because energy is a conserved quantity and it is it can it is it cannot be uh, means destroyed so it should be constant it's a conjob quantity so here the energy sum of energy of kinetic plus potential and during this process i can write that will be this work done will be equal to net change in the energies so i'll write w net this is from work energy theorem w net is equal to delta k plus delta u so delta k is half rho delta v v2 square minus v1 square and delta u is rho delta v g h2 minus h1 now what is this w net w net is this one p2 minus p1 p1 minus p2 delta v so i can write this uh, i can remove this w net and i can write this one p1 minus p2 whole into delta v now if I want to find that uh, per unit volume, what is the change per unit volume? 
So per unit volume, if I want to calculate, then I'll divide it B. That is delta B. The volume I'll divide so I can get the expression in terms of per unit volume, right? The change in per unit volume or the energy, the expression per unit volume I'll get. So what shall I do? Because all the term delta V is there, so I can easily cancel it out. So what I'll do is I'll divide delta V in all the terms and I'll get P1 minus P2 equal to half rho. This delta V also will be cancelled. I'm dividing delta V all in all the terms rho or I can write this if we are getting confused dividing delta V. So rho half rho V2 square minus V1 square plus rho G H2 minus H1. Now what I will do? This is done. This is your Bernoulli's Lewis equation. I will just uh, rearrange this equation and I will get the final expression. So what I will do? This H, uh, all the two term I will bring one side and all the one term I will bring one side so that the total energy at one position and the total energy at one position we can uh, find out. So P1 I will keep because I am separating out. Here I will get V1. So if I will bring the V1, it is negative term. If I will bring to the left side, it will become plus. So this will become half rho uh, V1 square and H1 term rho G minus rho G H1. This one, if I will bring to the left side, it will be again rho G H1, which will be equal to P2. P2 is a minus P2. So I will take to the right side, it will become again plus. So this one will become plus half rho uh, P2 square plus rho G H2. This is your Bernoulli Lewis equation. So, at each position in a streamlined flow and a steady flow for a non compressible liquid, what will happen? Happen. It is not turbulent. Uh, we will discuss Reynolds number and turbulent flow later on. So, for uh, a steady flow, what will happen at each position, any position if we will take its pressure at that position, area of cross section and uh, if you know the its uh, velocity, you can find out, uh, you can, if you will add it up, all the terms, it should be a constant at each position. So, for the position 3, I will write, so P3 plus half rho V3 square plus rho G H3 is a constant term, right? So, you can... Uh, you can write that this is a constant, this is a constant, right. So, uh, this is, this equation is a Bernoulli Lewis equation and this will hold good if, means, uh, you know, we, we know the gauge pressure. You can derive this gauge pressure because here the liquid is flowing, but gauge, gauge pressure is the pressure variation if, uh, um, means, uh, between the different points in a liquid. So, how can you reduce the gauge pressure from here? from this equation to gauge pressure equation. Gauge pressure equation, you know that P2 minus P1 is rho GH. Suppose this is a container and two points are there. This is a height depth H. So between these two points, the pressure difference will be P2 minus P1 is rho GH. This is, we know that this is a gauge pressure. Now, if you fix the liquid, suppose the liquid is not flowing. It's not in motion. It is at, at rest, let's say. Here you blocked right here the liquid is not flowing then this equation will be reduced to the gauge pressure equation how just you cut just you uh, because v1 this velocity will be zero so your p1 plus rho g h1 p2 plus rho g h2 it will be okay so for rest for liquid at rest okay for liquid at rest and you can say p1 I'll bring it to left side, P1 minus P2 is becoming rho, I'll take it to right side, rho G H2 minus H1. So, which is your gauge pressure? Pressure difference is equal to height difference and rho G, rho is the density. So, if you will analyze this term or, or if you want to remember this equation, it looks big but uh, sometimes you, it is difficult for the students to remember. So, what you can do is just you can imagine right we know that at, at any point if we want to find the total energy 
then we need the sum of its kinetic energy and potential energy. So, here uh, you can see that uh, what is kinetic energy half mv square. So, instead of m just for liquid if you will remember instead of m I will put rho. So, instead of m you have uh, used rho here half rho v square. So, we know that kinetic energy is half mv square but here half rho v square. Kinetic uh, potential energy is mgh here it is rho gh right. So, instead of m if you will use rho only it will be and one uh, pressure term if you will have to add then you will get the Bernoulli's equation. So, how will you re remember it easily? You will remember it easily by you know that the energy at any point Bernoulli's equation means energy equation you can it's it's a conservation from conservation of energy it is derived so you should keep it in mind so energy means kinetic and potential term will come so kinetic term is half mv square instead of m i'll write rho this is only the thing mv square v is the velocity plus velocity at that point plus um, mgh will come so m is again i'll write rho rho gh will come and i have to add one pressure as i told so this is your Bernoulli's equation. If some 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 uh, in numerical, suppose uh, at that point uh, using Bernoulli's equation, something you have to find out. So you can use this uh, uh, equation, right? So this is all about your Bernoulli's equation. In the next videos, I'll discuss about some other uh, properties, uh, application of Bernoulli's equation. Lots of applications are there, interesting like Venturi meter and uh, checking the heart rate flow means uh, blood blood rate uh, flow of rate, um, blood rate and uh, uh, different uh, squeezer right so different applications are there uh, i'll be discussing about the applications of Bernoulli's equation hope you have understood this uh, um, derivation if it is clear it's good if it is not clear write in the comment box i'll try to make some uh, explanatory video uh, later on thank you for watching the video see you in the next video bye bye